Let's be real. The only thing that matters right now is what Jerome Powell says. And when he said the things that he said and people weren't happy, you shouldn't be surprised. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. In today's video, I'm going to break down what Jerome Powell said. I'm going to show you the data that's actually behind this, why this is all happening right now today as it affects people in their daily lives and actually in the next few months could become even worse. Let's begin. First things first, you can see Powell reiterates Fed likely to keep rates higher for longer. Officials should be patient and let restrictive policy work. Powell flags lack of inflation progress in the first quarter. So this comes after an interview. He's there. He made a few you know, a few comments that markets really didn't like, investors really didn't like, um, and not that he's saying the, the wrong things necessarily. It's just the admission that the Federal Reserve, we see it, and they are basically going along with it. Uh, we did not expect this to be a smooth road, but these were higher than I think anybody expected. Who's anybody exactly? Not those watching this channel. Anyway, what... Uh, that has told us is that we need to be patient, let restrictive policy do its work, higher for longer, higher for longer. This was not anticipated all the way through 2023 into the end of the year. That was not the case. We were with this understanding in the fourth quarter, inflation was getting better. There was no need to worry because the cuts are coming soon. Today, very different scenario, isn't it? Okay, so that's what Jerome Powell said. Markets don't like that. Investors don't like that because they want interest rate cuts. You could see the direct response, the direct response with cryptocurrencies. Of course, this happens all the time. They move like that. And of course, when there isn't going to be an easy money policy coming around, you could see it going in the cryptocurrency markets. You see it in the markets in general. Markets do move, you know, generally and broadly in one direction. Um, but of course, there's always going to be different days. We've seen a lot of risk taking recently and uh, that can't last while we have a tighter monetary policy. Tighter. I got to put that ER at the end of that. Looking at this, I mean, I think it's just pretty clear what has happened. Um, you know, talking about the cuts and so on. The idea that a cut would happen is still on the table. Powell saying that, but not at this time. Rate hikes suggesting no, no, we're just going to hold it in place. Okay, so understand that. The anticipation right now from not just Powell, but others of the FOMC is that they will, uh, at this point, start to um, just hold in place. Okay, no cuts. What is the data behind that? very important is the PPI. Now, PPI, Producer Price uh, Index, this is something that we have to look at because it tells us what happens with the CPI, the Consumer Price Index. So that's uh, basically leading us into the CPI. And when you can see the producer prices up, then what happens? If the raw materials that go into what makes my products that I sell are then higher, if the labor is more, if the warehousing is more, it's, the shipping is more, so on and so forth, then it's going to be an um, increase in the price that I sell that product for. Okay, so if I'm used to a 20% profit margin and now suddenly it's 15% or 12%, well, what am I going to do? I bump it up a dollar, right? And that's the way it goes. That's the way things have been happening, not just for, I'm just talking about personal experience, uh, but you can see that this is with Clorox and this is with, you know, all these other brands out there. They do the same thing. Of course, they know how to really put the squeeze on. This is showing us the uh, PPI again, but um, when we look at the core PPI, so whatever, there's like a million different ways to, to measure these things. The point I was just showing you is that However, it's measured, the PPI has risen. Okay, that's all you need to know. Um, I'm looking at it for services as well. Services, I mean, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous how expensive services in general have become. You want any service done, it seems like it's just off the charts, off the charts uh, over the last few years. The gold price, of course, responded 
positively to this because if there's going to be inflation out there, you know what goes on. I mean, it's pretty clear, uh, but we'll see if that can be sustained. Okay. If they are going to, um, you know, it's going to be higher inflation rates. The antithesis of that would be, you know, I, I guess we could say if inflation is going to be higher, the hedge against that inflation is gold. Okay. And that's the direct response, but you know, if it's willing to be sustained is, is a different story. Keep that in mind. But know this, bad news becomes good news for the S&P again. That's the way it goes. Bad news is good news. Why is that the case? Because it means cuts have to come soon enough. Higher inflation. Ah, well, that means we're going to have to cut some interest rates, right? Or... Lower inflation. Oh, we're going to have to cut some interest rates. Oh, the sky is blue. We're going to have to cut some interest rates. They're looking for any reason to do that. Okay. So they just change your tune as they see fit. Market typically rallies on good or bad news. Okay. I mean, this is the way it goes. If you're trying to always be on the opposite side of that, you're like, I'm going to short every day of the year, all day, every day year after year after year, you're going to be in big trouble because the vast majority of the time, the stock market goes up. Okay, that that's the way it goes. So don't, you know, just, just watch out. That's all I'm saying. Uh, and I wanted to make something clear as well. The PPI for processed goods is one of those ones that I see a lot of times. Processing is where you incur more, um, you know, more time, more effort and all that. Um, and so like, for instance, if you're looking at like a food, well, something that doesn't require any processing or minimal processing, like a head of lettuce or something, that head of lettuce, they just cut it, they can throw it there in a pile that might require minimal processing. Whereas, you know, if you're going to make the, you know, the sugary cereals that people have, that requires a lot of processing. So we see the prices rise on those more. We've seen more inflation on those things. There's no question about it. Look at like a McDonald's hamburger. There's so much processing that goes into that versus like just the simple thing that you might buy from your butcher or whatever. Big difference. I don't know if this guy was being sarcastic or whatever, but on X, he said, no reason to be al be alarmed by the PPI. Strong stock market performance drove part of the gains, but airfares are down sharply. Auto insurance is flat and general consumer good goods markups are down. So I, I honestly don't, insurance is not going up. Are you kidding me? Airfares are down sharply. What? Not, I'm not going to tell you, not in Canada. And consumer goods markups are down. Look, none of that is, seems to be accurate to me. You tell me, is it? By the way, if you appreciate this information, hit that thumbs up button. Don't forget that to do that, okay? Listen, there's a very serious uh, thing that's going on today and that, that we can see more inflation piling up on top of people. They're core PPI and and looking at the core PCE and looking at the CPI, none of that is real. None of that's real, particularly when they get rid of volatile food and energy. I love that. They can't just say food and energy. They Every single time, 100% of the time, they put volatile food and energy. It's hilarious, but of course, that's the way it's done on purpose. It's propaganda. So what can we do as individuals? Of course, like I've said before a thousand times, um, you can just check my playlist where I've go over this, you know, a lot. Um, but basically, we need to be doing what we can to mitigate some of this damage. We need to reduce the costs uh, that we're spending in a given month. Go back to any of your providers, your insurance, your power, where you're getting your food from, everything. Renegotiate. Renegotiate or go to another company. There are always going to be competitors 
and that's uh, something that we can do we get comfortable in where we are go back to these companies and ask them for a better deal or seek out another one this is the way we can reduce our costs and we can do so today yes that might involve being on the phone for an hour and arguing and then you got to switch to the other company and you got to do some paperwork but in the end you might save a few hundred bucks a year on just one thing that didn't you know may, maybe that's worth it to you to save a few hundred dollars it's a simple matter of a phone call some emails maybe some paperwork but do it Okay. If you want some more information about how I teach people each and every week on Friday and on Sunday in a live Zoom class, check out the link at the top of the description and don't be afraid to reach out to me and ask me any questions. Okay. I'll see you then. Take care.